Okay, everybody, we're ready to begin. Thank you very much for your patience, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Chris Caro. I am the Marketing and Account Manager here at Fulcrum Digital, and this is our webinar, Dark, Getting Your Organization Ready for the Post-Digital Era, presented by Dr. Dinesh Manarajan. Uh, Dr. Dinesh will be taking you through the presentation in uh, just a few minutes, but uh, I just want to give a few housekeeping, take care of a few housekeeping things. So, uh, obviously, we love questions here. Dr. Dinesh loves having this as a conversation, not just a presentation. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation at all, please submit them in the question form within GoToWebinar. Uh, we will be answering the questions throughout the presentation, but also there will be a stop at the end where we'll answer as many as we can. If for whatever reason you cannot answer your question, we'll be following up with all of you directly at the end and we'll make sure that your question gets answered. Uh, additionally, a recording of this webinar will be sent out to everybody who attended, so you'll be able to look back and review uh, at your leisure. Um, with that said, I will hand this over to Dr. Ganesh. Dr. Ganesh, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, good morning to all of you in the U.S. and good afternoon in Europe, and of course, good evening to folks down in India. And I think what we plan to call it today, and Dark is, of course, a very interesting concept, first talked about by Accenture. Uh, Paul Doherty, who's the chief of digital. And it's kind of caught the imagination of a lot of people because, as most of you know, every organization has embarked in some fashion or the other on digital transformation. And many people are at various stages, and we'll talk about that. So what we will do in this presentation is primarily to talk about where various industries are in terms of embracing digital, how digital has created new opportunities for existing incumbent firms as well as digital attackers to completely change the industry, which is important for all of us. We'll start with that point in case any of you have any basic questions on digital. And then we'll move into the exciting world of dark. And dark, as you know, is post digital, which means assuming that people have experimented with the smack stack and got their core technology, processes, culture fixed. How do you go beyond that to really getting transformational benefits? And what I would like to do is take a couple of examples, and specifically in the insurance services segment, to really talk about how we are seeing the transformation happening, and then we we'll pause there and take other questions. So broadly speaking, if you look at, I think, where the world is in terms of digital transformation, it's fundamentally affecting all investors. In fact, I was in uh, Dubai a couple of weeks ago, speaking on digital transformation, and showed this slide, and as you can see on the slide, oil and gas is at the kind of bottom of the, of the pile in terms of implementation. And a gentleman stood up from the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and said, look, we are very advanced in digital. The point I'm making is there is no industry in, across the world, in many parts of the, of the, of the economy, which is not experimented with digital. So logically, you would expect when it's happening that you know, very B2C initiatives like tourism and media and telecom are seeing the real benefits of digital already. The number one, if you look at high tech, the street manufacturing, automotive, utilities are getting there. And even traditional healthcare, public sector, oil and gas are seeing this. And interestingly, we're finding that digital is more and more becoming a kind of dinner take for dynamic because people who are getting the lead in digital are really garnering a significant share of new opportunities that are coming up in their industry. We're also finding that if you look at digital transformation, this is the definition that all of us know. We think that digital transformation is beyond technology. It's a continuous process. We need to see disruptive changes in customer journeys, in employee journeys, in the way we address markets. Leverage data, because data is probably the single biggest commodity that we have to now um, um, acquire, disseminate, process, industrial department, and culture. A lot of people, erstwhile leaders in their segment, have forgotten to say that look, people are people, and everybody is not a digital native, and it's people who are digital migrants who need to be part of the digital culture. The new customer journeys will keep happening, and how we take care of those really determines how successfully we manage digital transformation. Technology is not everything, and what this very busy chart shows you is that while we can keep getting excited about big data and sensors and actuators and cloud computing and connectivity and 5G and what have you, the reality is 
but the ability to integrate physical and digital experiences with the e-commerce industry has shown up so well. IoT and the internet of everything. Uh, similarly, the whole robotic process automation, knowledge work automation, big data, using social media for almost everything, and everything moving as a service, whether it's applications as a service, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platforms as a service. I think that's what we see here. But most important, and the, and the winners know this extremely well, we must improve the experience. If customer experience does not get dramatically changed because of digital, we have the cheaper. Similarly, if employees don't really come to the party and say that this we will experience the digital and then take it forward to customers, we must achieve something. So enhancing productivity, which you see in the middle of the bottom line, is important, but improving the customer experience or improving the stakeholder experience and finding new business models all the time, this is really what this is transformation in its clearest sense of all time. We are finding multiple new models, and I will go you with this, but essentially what it means is that most of the very successful digital models today are moving beyond asset ownership. So if you look at an Uber, you look at a Facebook, which is publishing your content in mind, take an Alibaba.com, take an Airbnb, I and mean, it's almost inevitable that you don't need to own anything as a consumer, as a platform provider, but the ability to quickly move useful information from one part of the world to another, so one stakeholder to another is really what is digital transformation. So asset like new, new, new innovation and new ideas is what digital transformation is all about today. So essentially what it means is that the business models with which companies have operated in the past is changing very substantially. So we are seeing three models emerging as digital transformation matures. We are seeing of course the cost model. I mean Amazon has shown what a low cost, high service model can really do to the world. And that's true for Google, Facebook, and everybody else. You are seeing a very powerful experience model emerging. Netflix, for instance, which has completely changed the way people consume entertainment and content. Very strong personalization. You look at a company like Disney, for instance, I mean, some of their rich brands that you can actually acquire maybe a year before you go to a Disney park, to managing the entire experience and the rides and how you optimize your time when you actually travel to a Disney cruise or a Disney park, I think that's completely changing the experience. So you're finding that there's very little friction between the provider and the consumer, a lot of automation of the process, and hence enabling a much better experience. And finally, of course, the whole world is full of platforms. I mean, the company I'm speaking from, Fulcrum, is all about platforms for transforming digital. And these platforms are actually integrating the entire ecosystem of providers, of consumers, of technology partners, ensuring that ideas are crowdsourced from the community and digital marketplaces to them. So ultimately, as I said before, it is the data which is gold, which is, which is the new oil, and that data being actually spread across platforms and being used by everybody. I think that's really what digital is all about at this point of time. So this is really what we see as a web industry model and how this is transforming industry. In insurance, we are finding that the erstwhile model of a long-term insurance policy is really being replaced by usage-based insurance. I mean, you can almost predict at what point somebody will need insurance and for what period of time and potentially to avoid what incident. And we are saying that in vehicle insurance, for instance, it's almost 15% of the new marketplace is coming to. E-commerce, of course, cognitive personal shopping and social networks are changing the way People are putting out marketing messages and sales are happening. Retail, we've all seen that. I mean, large apparel retailers are using AI powered designs and they're predicting the trends on literally on an as is happening basis. Manufacturing, I think service is completely transformed by IoT being embedded literally in every truck that's going out into the marketplace. Finance, along with large governments, are embracing blockchains and distribu distributed ledger technologies. So there is a prediction which is mentioned here that almost 25% of future price demand will be completely transformed through blockchain and distributed measures. And healthcare. A little close to the party, but we are finding that telemedicine, mobile health is all changing the way healthcare is happening. So this is broadly the way industries are transforming. And now let me take some time to spend on, okay, now assuming that you're in a company that has reached this pitch. As I said earlier, you, you optimize your processes, manage new customer journeys, 
make sure that technology is working in the benefit of transformation, then you go from there. So the minute it's post digital or post the, the plate you reached to the dark world, if you will, what is dark ultimately? Dark is D is of course distributed ledger, I mean our distributed digital ledger and blockchains everywhere. A is artificial intelligence and AI, I mean the, the story is still being written on what AI will do to the world, but there's no doubt that AI will be everywhere. It will be assisting us in performing functions, it will be augmenting the work we do, and in many cases, and this is of course a threat to jobs, the autonomous work entirely. So we will have robots all over which are replacing some uh, repetitive activities, and more important, adding value to activities which could not have been done without AI. Or, of course, is reality, what Satya Nadella of uh, Microsoft has called mixed reality, which is using virtual reality to experience situations which you may not experience in real life, augmented reality, especially in warehousing, picking, etc., to make sure that it's much more efficient, the process of warehousing and distribution. Quantum computing, I mean, as you know, quantum computing will make everything possible. And people are truly saying that a combination of quantum computing and 5G will make things happen so fast that we will be limited only by our imagination in the kind of applications that DART will enable us to really uh, provide to the marketplace. What it means is, I mean, just to give a little more detail on this, that when you talk about distributed smart ledger, middlemen will be able to make it. We have large scale collaboration across companies, across countries, and smart contracts which can be executed worldwide. Artificial intelligence, as I mentioned, will not only automate, but will have the ability to scan unprecedented amounts of data. And it will make the benefits of analytics, not just the traditional descriptive analytics model, but predictive, prescriptive, AI, machine learning, will completely change the world we engage with current and future customers. Reality, I mentioned, will basically give you a completely new immersive environment. And when I say immersive, so people can actually visualize the world of the future in their current context and make changes today to what they will be delivering to customers tomorrow. And very on hand, or very on demand, very hands free, and really living the future, if you will. Quantum computing, I mentioned that. I mean, today, the opportunity to, whether using 3D printing, new materials, transforming the way secure systems are implemented all over the world, and solving completely different problems. Today's computers, tomorrow's networks, and making change happen. What this does mean is, and this is a slide which is it for real, I mean, are we just talking fairy tales or is, are people already using it? The good news is, it's in implementation as we speak. So if you look at distributed ledgers, there's almost 3.9 billion in investment that has happened in the first three quarters of last year in just blockchain technology. And this, by the way, goes way beyond cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, which is the first killer app as far as this was concerned. But today, I think real applications and smart contracts are changing the way financial services, legal, government processes are being delivered. AI, as I mentioned, is an amazing figure that 91% of companies are already experiencing with AI, and they're creating the kind of differentiation that we'd like to see happening more and more in the marketplace. Reality, I mean, we're seeing a focus on green investment, and my belief is that almost every company will embrace AR and VR in some form of life. I mean, I've seen a company in Asia, for instance, which is actually in the social sector, which is using virtual reality to encourage young people to experience jobs and careers that they had only imagined or seen on television. So the opportunity to change the new world is enormous with this reality. And quantum computing, I mean, you've seen the data here, I mean, it took 19 years to get a chip to to the two qubits to maybe grow by eight times, but since then it's become 50 qubit chips, the 70 qubit chips. My belief is that we will never ever be limited by the power of storage or transmission. So the limitation, as I said earlier, is going to be all about people's imagination as we speak. If you look at this example, which is more from manufacturing, a German car manufacturer, I think we've all heard of Tesla many times as a pioneer in so many new things in the industry. But today, everybody, whether it's Volkswagen or BMW or, or Japanese car companies, are all experiencing or experimenting with cars. And if you look at this particular example, I mean, distributed ledgers are protecting cars, and don't forget there is more electronics in the car today than automobile engineering. 
So from payments, gas station, tamper proof equipment, that's what we're doing with this unit. Uh, if you look at artificial intelligence, AI capabilities are there in every car model. And as you well know, today the features that you're getting in your car will actually be energized maybe over the next three years. So people are putting in so much of electronics into the car that it will slowly be unleashed for you as and when you start using it more effectively. Augmented reality, as I mentioned, most people are using this to let their employees do servicing of cars in terms of showing them the parts much better, optimizing the time it takes to almost like a Formula One pit stop, which is moved down to two seconds. The same thing will happen in terms of car servicing to give you maximum uptime of your automobile. And finally, of course, I mean, Q, which is I mean, testing, optimizing at every stage. A car will not come out on the road unless every possible situation has been forecast, has been simulated, and they find solutions well before the problem could occur. The same thing is happening in the services sector, and we've done a large couple of slides to give you a few, a few examples from services. But it's important to understand that there is a strategic mindset shift that is happening. I mean, a lot of services used to be about who can deliver a service much faster. But today, it's all about how you can advocate a new solution for a customer. I mentioned this earlier, how do you manage a personalized journey so that every person who is availing a service is treated as a unit of one, and we can actually optimize the service delivery for that particular person. I mean, you don't need to fall into a category. You can actually be fitted into your own category and we design a service for you. I mentioned proactive and predictive earlier, but I think that's going to be extremely critical in service delivery. Nurturing co-creating communities. I mean, there are, there are entities even in China which are enabling communities to work together. I mean, there's this company called Ant Financial, which emerged out of Alibaba. And these guys are servicing almost 85% of the small and medium enterprises in China, for instance, and giving them all kinds of co-creative services which is created by the community, created by the company, and jointly taken to the marketplace. Operationally, of course, I think what you're seeing with digital and what you will continue to see with that is information consistency, the ability to do social interaction, price discovery with Amazon was the first point of that. But today, people are able to interact much before they take purchasing decisions. And we, as service providers, need to be very, very aware of that. A whole bunch of cyber physical reality, connected devices, enabling you to transact from literally any point in your journey cycle. And a lot of touch, a lot of voice, eventually a lot of smell-based systems will come in and completely transform the digital. So basically what are we saying? We are saying that anybody who is not serious about this will first have to do an assessment or a design of where they are today and where they would want to be. They'll have to have an assessment process and an analysis of outputs which says how do we run the new business applications that can emerge out of digital transformation. And reflect. How do we constantly have a feedback loop that will enable us to re-architect or, or tweak our strategy to ensure that any change that's happening with customer preferences is incorporated as we speak. And that's the joy of this. That there's nothing that you have to fix today for the next five years. You can actually do something today, change it tomorrow, change it in three days' time, and literally make those changes in a dynamic way. So just giving you one example, I mean, if you look at the digital insurer, for instance, I mean, the company I'm, I'm speaking from, Falcon, there's a whole bunch of work in the digital insurance space. But essentially, this model is what I would recommend anybody looking at digital transformation, irrespective of whether you're in education, or manufacturing, or banking, or healthcare, or insurance, you look at. Because as I mentioned earlier, the first important thing is to do a comprehensive digital maturity effect. Where are we in terms of what we want to accomplish, not for ourselves as an organization, but for our customers and our stakeholders? What, what is the path we can take to get there? Then look at customer experience redesign, which is extremely important because the customers are changing all the time and their experience will have to be exciting, will have to be enlightening for them to stay with the brand. Optimizing business processes. I'm using a word called optimization and automation because in the good old days, you just take an existing process and automate it. But today we're saying there's an opportunity to make it much simpler, more elegant, faster, and more value adding, and then automate it. Core systems, and all of us in organizations know that legacy systems will continue to exist. And what do you do with that core system? There are really three possible elements of strategy. 
You could either completely take a third party application, like for insurance, there are at least five different core systems that people have implemented, will continue to implement it. But what's important to remember is no single system will suffice given the very quick changing customer preferences that are happening. So you will find you will find that, for instance, there are business platforms that can be created. There can be laboratories that you can install along with your company to make sure that your experience is enhanced. So what I'm saying is there will be a combination of one large core system and multiple systems which are really part of your architecture and which will be connected by APIs and technology gives you enough opportunity to make that happen. Uh, you'll also find that cloud will be the way we will look. I don't think any organization will look at on-premise solutions in the future. So a lot of this being published in the cloud, a lot of microservices being integrated with the architecture is the way we are seeing it going. And last but not the least, we will find a lot of analytics coming into play. As I said, the whole use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, will be more and more productive and difficult to happen. On the other side, we need an innovation lab. We will actually have to keep experimenting with new technology. We will use huge implementation of change management. And in many of the client experiences that I've been party to, we're finding that almost 40% of the effort goes into innovation or building an innovation ecosystem and change management. So broadly speaking, the assessment piece, the re-architecting of systems, putting in new cool technologies that will enable transformation of customer experience, analytics and data, and change management. I think this mix, if you can really implement well in your organization, you'll find that the, the real results are coming. So finally, what are the decision points? And I'll stop here. The first question, of course, is, is your digital foundation, or whatever you've implemented with digital technology, are we ready for that? Are we ready to think beyond what we have accomplished, look at what is possible, and really start implementing that? Determining what path for your organization. So just because GE implemented something, is no recipe for us to be able to implement it. We need to adapt our own digital transformation strategy to our capabilities, to our DNA as an organization. How will you use Ben Dark to change the future of your industry? And if you're a large insurer, there's no reason why you cannot be blazing new trails or looking at new opportunities which will enable you to take the lead and also take the industry into a new direction, which is exactly what I think we saw in, uh, in UK when Amazon came into the party or uh, entertainment when Netflix came into the party. And finally, of course, and I mentioned this all the time, how will you add in dark trails to your website? So let me start by saying, I think like any other transformational technology, whether it's digital or dark, you will find that the best results are coming when you first think customer, customer, customer all the time. You look at customer preferences, optimize your processes, to get enabling technology. And the one thing we can do is implement technologies because they exist. But technologies in terms of changing your customer service processes is the first thing to look at. And once you do that, and you know what data sources are there in your organization and in the ecosystem, and you're able to integrate that with better analytics. We have a basis for saying, here are the new processes, here's a new way of managing data, let me train my people and build in a culture that digital transformation is not only successful, but will stay successful and make your organization more successful in the years to come. So that's basically why I thought I'd tell you, look forward to answering any questions or interacting. And my, my feeling is that DART is the future, there is a digital light out there, and as we all know, it's a journey, not a destination. But nevertheless, success is very possible if you take a very thoughtful approach to digital transformation. So thank you very much, and look forward to any interaction, any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Ganesh. And uh, we do have a couple questions. Uh, I will throw the first one I see out right now. How do I invest in dark while keeping myself open to the next big thing? That will eventually come out, and how long do you expect this dark trend to last? No, that's a very great, good question. And a lot of times we look at new technologies. I heard that with uh, blockchain first. This is oh, this is just a fad, and it will go away, and nobody's going to use Bitcoin. Now, not only are Bitcoins staying there, but as I said earlier, I think blockchains are also finding a new sense of purpose in many contexts. So similarly with dark, I think dark is not a technology or a group of technologies. I think you will find that dark has the potential to transform everything we do. I mean, if any of you are fond of reading, 
I would strongly recommend you read a book by a gentleman called Jewel Harari. It's called, I mean, first he wrote a book on Sapien, which is the history of the last 2,000 years. And then he wrote a book called Humadir, which is actually a history of the future. Now, it's interesting to say history of the future, because what, you know, what Professor Harari really means is that our future can be redefined in many ways because of the advance of technology. And he gives a lot of examples on how artificial intelligence can actually run the way you think about what you want to do with your life. We've already seen that happening with uh, the new versions of Cortana from Microsoft, or Alexa, and et cetera, et cetera. But the point I'm making is, there's no getting away from digital transformation. This is not a fad, it's not a trend. We need to embrace it. As I mentioned earlier, not everybody needs to follow the same path. So you could look at what is the best thing for your organization. But ignore it as your parents. So I think we should make sure we understand what we are in. And of course, once you start implementing it and making it part of the life stream of your organization, you will probably find that it doesn't matter how long you take, but you keep your options open for an enabling new technology. And I was working with a firm which suddenly found there were huge opportunities using augmented reality. And they figured how to fix that within the overall digital strategy. So the answer to your question is, embark on the path towards digital, choose your own pace, your own methods, what your priorities are. At the same time, keep your eyes open for any new opportunity because technologies will keep, keep coming down the pipe and it's up to us to introduce, ignore, and decide what we want to do in that part. Thank you. Uh, the next question that we have, uh, can you elaborate on what post-digital means specifically for companies? So as I mentioned, uh, when we say post-digital, I mean, is this a terminology to say that, let's assume that the first stages of digital had been accomplished, because as all of us know, it started off with one group of technologies called SMAC, which so social, mobility, analytics, and cloud. Then a lot of uh, adjacencies in terms of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, AR, VR, training. And that's how digital transformation got to one level of success in many of which. And as I mentioned earlier, it was embraced primarily initially by retail and e-commerce, then moved to insurance and banking, and of course manufacturing, and last but not least, process manufacturing and government. So if you look at what those digital means, it really means that Choose a layer or level that you need to reach, which, as I said, many companies have reached and will reach maybe in the next few years. But most important, start thinking today about the technologies that can transform customer experience tomorrow. So when I talk about post digital and with the specific reference to dark, I think we talked about blockchain and we said, look, AI can transform. And I think for companies, a thoughtful view on AI is going to be extremely important. An important use of that is obviously going to be in the future of analytics. Because most of the companies I deal with today have moved towards some form of predictive and descriptive analytics. And it doesn't matter to me which industry you belong to. I think you still have to consider that very seriously. So if you take these two, AI and uh, on the whole digital space, then you can decide judiciously what, how you can use augmented reality. And as I mentioned, the jury is still out on what will be the impact that quantum computing will have. But the more, you, more I see edge applications coming, which are really using the power of really high, high processing speeds in technology, and the more we see the, the transformational power of 5G technologies, I think you will find that all companies will have to adopt it in some way. Well. And again, as I said, it's up to you where you want your company to be placed in the spectrum of your industry. But if you want to be a market leader, or if you want to be a fast follower, I think post digital is going to be the way to go in terms of the future planning, the strategy of your organization. We have time for one more question. Uh, the question is: um, These new areas will take investment. Will take investment, and when they're and when they're um, sorry, I'm I'm having trouble reading right now. When uh, when they're urgent and when things are urgent and important to address, how do we coerce the organization? to invest in something that's in the distance. So I guess the really clear, how do you get the decision makers and the business leaders of your organization to kind of buy into dark with something that it's, it's the future, obviously we're investing in the future, but how do we, how do we coerce them into you? Well, that's, that's a very good question. And a lot of my time is spent on, you know, literally doing these half-day workshops with organizations 
Well, I think what you need to do in an organization is primarily get your leadership to understand that there is really no alternative. I mean, it's no longer an option of saying, should we look at digital, should we put some serious investment in digital or not? I mean, it's a question of how you do it rather than why should I do it. And once you do that, you'll find that if you want to do a return on investment calculation, you'll find that if you actually invest in digital over the next five years, potentially your organization itself will change. My guess is the return on investment in investing thoughtfully in digital can be tremendously more than the return on investment in traditional technology. So I think the important discussion to have is where is our industry today, the industry segment in which we are operating? What are the use cases or the exemplars in our industry who have really taken digital and made a very substantial transition? As I mentioned earlier, I mean, things like Ant financials in China or even some of the automobile companies worldwide, or for that matter, banking and financial services, are the changes. And then to say, after, after maybe a quick district assessment of your own organization, where are we today? I mean, and I would strongly recommend you look at those four factors I talked about in terms of our customer journeys, in terms of our processes, in terms of our technology, and in terms of our management of data. And then you find that, look, these are the weak links in our own organization. And the proposition then is to talk to the leadership of the company and say, hey, if we do this, these are the real benefits we can get. The benefits could be in terms of customer acquisition, the benefits could be in terms of productivity, the, best, the benefits could be in, in terms of employee experience and culture. But all this together, I can promise you, will make a very potent mix, which will transform the entity. And I think that's the opportunity that we need to understand for our own entity and make sure that the leadership understands it so that they can invest thoughtfully in this entire transition. I know I said that was the last question, but we, we got another good one in, so I want to make sure we get this one actually on. Doesn't Amazon qualify for all three models? And what do large organizations like that have to do differently compared to SMEs? Well, that's a very good question because, I mean, obviously, if you look at Amazon or for that matter, you look at Tesla or Walmart, etc., you will find that they have the ability to literally invest very heavily in this area of transformation. And which is why even artificial intelligence, I mean, because some of the discussions that were happening in Silicon Valley, people are almost like taking conscious human decisions on how much to invest in artificial intelligence. If you're an SME, which is an interesting question, if you're a small company, I think you have to be much more careful because it's very easy to get very excited in the car shop of digital and say, let's implement this and that and everything else. And there, I think, a much more thoughtful approach to say that, look, let's invest strongly behind an area that we think will transform us. And again, you may want to choose one of the value disciplines that you can transform through digital. One could be you know, better products or services, which is important. The second is operational excellence. The third could be how much of customer involvement and customer uh, supremacy we really want to look at. So once you choose what you can transform in your company, as a small company, I would think that you know, put most of your energy, a lot of your money behind that, so that is the good value. There are a lot of peripheral areas that you may want to battle in, but depending on your budget, you can choose a core transformation agenda, a core investment path, and focus on that. And then if there is money and there is excitement left over, you can always invest across the board in other things. But you're absolutely right. I mean, the ability of an Amazon to invest in the future is always going to be huge. And if you're a nimble follower or a competitor in that space or any other space, is best to be very, very thoughtful and uh, focused on where you invest. Okay, uh, and that's all the time we have for today. If your question was not addressed, we'll be following up with you directly. Again, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and obviously thank you to Dr. Kanesh for sharing his insight insightful thoughts. Um, we'll, again, a recording will be sent out at the conclusion of this webinar. Uh, it might take a little while, but it will be sent to you via email that you register with. And again, thank you very much on behalf of all of us here at Fulton Digital. Have a good day.